In this section, we're going to look at some basic operations on functions. So this is going to include the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient. Or in other words, adding two functions together, subtracting them, multiplying them, or dividing. So we're going to begin with an example where they give us two functions. We have f of x equaling negative 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. And we have a function g of x, which is equal to negative 2x plus 2. And so the first thing that we want to do is we want to add those functions together. Okay, so addition is probably the easiest of the four operations. We're basically going to write down the f function. So negative 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. And then we're going to write down the g function. So negative 2x plus 2. And we're going to put an addition sign in between these two. And from there, all we need to do is simplify. And we're going to simplify by combining like terms. So we have a negative 3x squared. We have a negative 2x and a negative 2x. That's going to make a negative 4x. And then we have a negative 1 and a positive 2, which will make a positive 1. All right, and so now we know that the sum of those two functions is going to be negative 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. Now we're going to do the same basic idea for subtraction. So we want to find f minus g of x. So we're going to write down our function f. We're going to write down our function g. And we're going to put a subtraction sign in between. Now we have to be careful here because if we leave it just like I have right now, then I am likely to only think that that subtraction applies to the first term, when actuality that subtraction needs to be distributed among both of the terms in the second function. So to remind myself to distribute that negative, I'm going to put the second function in a set of parentheses. So now we're going to work at simplifying. So I'm going to leave the first function as it is. So I'm still going to have negative 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. No changes on the first function. And then as I move to the second function, I'm going to distribute that negative through that set of parentheses. So a negative times a negative 2x is going to make a positive 2x. And a negative times a positive 2 is going to make a negative 2. Now we can combine like terms. So I have a negative 3x squared. This negative 2x and this positive 2x combine to cancel each other out. And then I have a negative 1 and a negative 2, which makes a negative 3. All right, for the third one, we have f times g. This is our multiplication. All right, so I'm going to write down my function f. And I am going to go ahead and put it in parentheses. And right next to it, I'm going to put my function g. And we're going to work at multiplying these two functions together. Now, when we multiply, we're going to multiply using basically using the FOIL method, but we're going to have to expand it a little bit because the first function has three terms instead of two. So I'm going to begin by taking this negative 3x squared, and I'm going to multiply it by both of the terms in the second parenthesis. So negative 3x squared times negative 2x, that's going to give me a positive 6x to the third and negative 3x squared times positive 2 is going to give me a negative 6x squared. Then 
The next thing I'm going to do is take this negative 2x and distribute it among the back parentheses. So negative 2x times negative 2x is going to be a positive 4x squared. Negative 2x times positive 2 is going to be negative 4x. And then finally, I'm going to take this negative 1 and distribute it to both terms in the second parenthesis. So negative 1 times negative 2x is going to be a positive 2x. Negative 1 times positive 2 is going to be a negative 2. And once that's done, then we can combine like terms. So I'm going to have a 6x cubed. My squared terms will combine to give me negative 2x squared. My x terms will combine to give me negative 2x. And then I have a minus 2 on the end. And finally, our last problem asks us to do a division. f divided by g. So we're going to put f on the top. And we're going to put g on the bottom. Now, there's not much I can do to simplify. If I were able to factor the top part of the fraction and cancel with the bottom part, I would want to do that. But in this case, the top part is not factorable into anything that's going to allow me to cancel in the denominator. And so we'll leave it just like we have it. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our last problem. All right, so we have f plus g of x to begin with. So we want to look at our functions f of x being the square root of x plus 2 and g of x being the square root of 3 minus x. So when we add our two functions together, remember that we're going to simply write down the function f, put a plus sign in between, and then write down the function g. Now, there is no way to add these two square roots together because they do not have similar terms underneath the square root. So we're pretty much done at that point. Similarly, if we're going to do the subtraction, we're going to have the same issue. We can write the function f down. We can put a subtraction. And we can write the function g. But we can't actually do anything beyond that in terms of simplifying. If I'm going to do my product, I am multiplying x plus 2 times three, the square root of 3 minus x. Now, in this case, you can combine the two terms underneath the same square root. So I could write this in as a simplified version. The square root of x plus 2 times 3 minus x. And finally, for the division, for the product, or for the quotient, we're going to put function f on the top. And we're going to put function g on the bottom. Now, there's not much I can do to simplify this. However, keep in mind that you are not supposed to leave a fraction that has a radical in the denominator. So remember, in order to get rid of that radical in the denominator, that you would want to multiply the top and the bottom by that denominator. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3 minus x. And again, this is just going to eliminate that radical in the denominator. So for the top part, we have our product again. I'm going to put it under the same radical. So I have the square root of x plus 2 times 3 minus x. 
And on the bottom, a square root times itself is basically the same thing as saying the square root squared. They cancel each other out, leaving me 3 minus x in the denominator. Okay, one final comment that I want to make to you as you look at these problems, I want to call your attention to the notation. I want you to keep in mind that if you were asked to find, for example, f of g of x, that having this x here only tells you that the problem is worked in terms of the variable x. It does not mean that you should calculate the sum and then multiply by x, which is often what I see students do. So you can ignore this x sitting on the end, or just keep in mind that that x tells you that the problem has x values in it. It's just like saying f of x or g of x.